fucking jeans, man. Ugh. Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So this is part two of my issues with the beauty community. The reason I put petty in the title is because most of these issues are petty, but some of them are less and I still want to include them because I didn't touch on them in the first video. Also, apologies if I have to look down, but again, I made notes this time on my phone so I can actually remember everything. If I put a picture on a screen of an influencer, I'm not doing it to be shady as much as that's literally just the first person I thought. Hello, it's me from another day because the audio stopped recording the 23 minutes that came after. We love that for me. So today's video has a few chapters. The first chapter is the few represent the many. The second is shadiness, the third is disorganization, the fourth is relatability, and the fifth is manipulation. This point was actually made to me by someone who does makeup and they will be linked down below as well, but they did voice to me that the few represent the many, right? So this goes for a number of communities. I'd say the majority of communities. And when I say the few represent the many, I mean that when I talk about the beauty community, I talk about the people who could be considered at the top of the community, such as Jeffree Star, James Charles, the people we constantly hear about, right? So when I talk about the beauty community, I'm talking about them. When I say the beauty community, I'm really talking about the people we hear about all the time of being in drama. I'm not talking about separate artists who really are there for the artistry, but nonetheless, it can give them a bad name because the beauty community has kind of a stigma to it now where it's equated to a drama community in some ways because there's always some shit going on between the beauty gurus that we constantly hear about. And that is an issue in its own way because then some artists who really are just there for the artistry don't feel like they're part of the community because they're not these millionaires who are in drama all the time. They're just people who like makeup, which is really what the makeup community should be about, the beauty community. So there's a feeling of almost disconnect between some of the smaller creators and these big creators just because it seems like maybe the priorities are not in the right place with the big creators. But I mean, that's up to you to decide. Another point they made that I forgot to mention is also that people base their understanding of the beauty community based on, like I said, the top players. So they think that a lot of the smaller creators have kind of the same perks, like they'll assume that they receive PR, they'll assume that they have these healthy relationships with brands, when in reality, I was told that sometimes brands ghost once they get what they want, say they want to send you PR and you post what you get, then they kind of just go MIA. And a lot of people don't get PR and PR lists are actually hard to get onto. But since we see these top creators who just kind of show it as if it's an everyday thing, then people are like, oh, everyone gets PR. And this is valid for myself as well. I'm not a beauty person, but people tend to think I know a lot of YouTube people, which I don't. I'm on a speaking basis with very few YouTubers. Like there is a very small sense of community community in my opinion and that's also kind of what I got from the creator I spoke to. Uh, but I do think this problem is particular to the beauty community in certain ways because of course every community has its shitty people but I feel like the beauty community at this point is known for its toxicity in a lot of ways and I can understand why an artist would hate that because I, it's like when I hated when the outside world kind of painted Jake Paul as every YouTuber. I don't want to be associated with Jake Paul. I have nothing in common with him except for the fact that we're both breathing and we're on this platform. That's it. But I wouldn't ever want to be painted like someone who's associated with him, if that makes sense. So I can understand why smaller artists or even bigger artists just don't want to be associated with the community because of its image. So I've heard from quite a few beauty creators. There are shit talking group chats. Now, shit talking is something that I think everyone does, whether they admit it or not. The difference is if you're shit talking with your friends and you're venting, that's a little bit different because your friends know who you are and they know your intention is likely to just vent so you can get something off your chest and then you move on, right? However, a lot of these group chats apparently are with other influencers that 
pretty much just follow each other, so they don't necessarily know each other, they're not necessarily that close, but they might shit talk other influencers. So it's essentially colleagues talking shit about other colleagues. This probably isn't exclusive to just the beauty community, but that's what we're focusing on here, especially because I do feel like a lot of people within the community tear each other down. So there's definitely a lot of shadiness going on in those group chats, and it kind of fuels a certain level of toxicity because it's like all these people talking shit and kind of egging each other on to continue talking shit. You don't know what their intentions are, and at some point it's just dumb because anyone in the group chat could just screenshot it and leak it or send it to the person you're talking about, you know? So it just seems dumb from even a business perspective where you might get outed for the shit you talk. So morally, it's obviously wrong, but even just from a business point stance, you're screwing yourself over. Aside from that, with shadiness, we also have cancel culture versus accountability. So the difference between cancel culture and accountability for me is that accountability indicates that there is a possibility for betterment and potentially, depending on your opinion, redemption. Cancel culture, on the other hand, pretty much turns it very black and white where it's like, this person fucked up, that's the end, they can never be forgiven, they can never grow from this, nothing good can really come of it. And of course, there are some things that maybe are unforgivable to you and me, so I'm not saying everyone has to be forgiven, but I'm just saying there should be an option to work on yourself and for people to make steps in a positive direction. However, in the beauty community, it's like when anything happens, people are screaming like, is this person canceled? Is this person done forever? And I just don't really like that. It's one thing to call someone out for fucking up and asking them to rectify their wrongs or apologize for what they did. And it's a complete other thing to essentially say that they will never ever be better and that they're not even worth living. Like some of these people get death threats over things that in my opinion are pretty minute. Then we have brand owners who act unprofessionally. The brands that come to mind here are Juvia's Place, Jeffree Star, and Jaclyn Hill. Now especially for Jaclyn Hill and Jeffree Star, they are brand owners so they have to act professionally in terms of their business, in terms of not clapping back to people on Twitter, because at the end of the day, yes, you're a human, but you're also the CEO of your company. So the way in which you address people is in a way representative of your brand. So if I launched a brand and someone told me, you know, hey, I didn't get my t-shirt and please let me know what I can do. And if I say, if I respond in a sassy or just overall inappropriate way, that reflects not only on me, but on my brand. So there's a certain type of standard you have to keep, but I feel like because they're on social media, these people kind of feel like it's okay to be unprofessional. In a way, I can understand because if people are harassing you, you want to respond, but at the same time, you have to think like a brand owner. So for example, Jaclyn Hill kind of going essentially MIA after lipstick gate, that doesn't reflect well on her brand because even though she must have been under crazy amounts of stress, I can't imagine, it's also like your brand still exists. Like it's not just you disappearing, it's you with your brand. So you can't just up and leave. And this also applies to Juvia's Place when they were calling people out, I think it was on their Instagram and going on these rants. And it's like, this is not appropriate. This actually leads to my next point in the shadiness section, perpetual drama. Because certain people don't act professionally and because people are so obsessed with canceling other people, there's always some shit going on. There is no slow day in the beauty community, mainly because people will take really small things and blow them out of proportion. Like I see drama being made out of things that don't need to be drama. Example, if I were a beauty creator and I had a problem with another beauty creator, the ideal thing would be for me to message them privately, we have a conversation, and then we try to squash it, or at least have a conversation and clarify. Ideally, that's what would happen. The world we're in now is more like, I'm gonna post a public tweet and at them, or not at them, and let people guess, and then people will start guessing, they'll start tagging who they think it is, then the person who maybe it's about will respond in another public tweet and it's just high school at that point. A lot of drama is easily avoidable, but it's like people might want it, you know, to generate clicks maybe, maybe because you're not as relevant as you used to be, allegedly just my opinion. 
This one is a little bit petty on my end, but this bothered the shit out of me, so I'm just gonna say it. The Norvina PR search on Twitter. So if you don't know, Norvina from Anastasia Beverly Hills did a PR search where essentially artists could show her pictures of their work and essentially give it a shot at getting Anastasia Beverly Hills PR. Now, I don't follow that many makeup artists on Twitter just because I prefer Instagram, no real big reason. And even I had my timeline absolutely swamped swamped with people tagging Anastasia Beverly Hills and Norvina to be noticed, putting their looks under every single Norvina tweet. Like, it was madness. Like, I could not even see what my friends were tweeting because there was all this shit. Now, of course, I could unfollow, but I didn't. This, to me, came off as disorganized because as much as I like social media and I think it's great in order to show your talent and maximize the people who see it, how hard would it have been for Norvina to set up a website where you can submit your work and then you can plug your social media so then if they want to see more of your work, they can go to your social media. So you're still using social media and showing your portfolio via social media, but it's done in a more organized fashion. I feel like in that way, it's also easier to keep tabs, you know, on who you've looked over and who you haven't, you know, if you have their full name and you can put them on a list rather than if you're on Twitter, you know, with a handle, I think it's harder to remember like, oh, did I already look at this handle or not? Especially when you have thousands of people reaching out to you in order to be noticed. I just thought that created a mess on the timeline, but aside from that, I feel like it created this cutthroat kind of like, I need to be noticed, fuck you, kind of like this competition that didn't necessarily seem extremely healthy to me, but that's just as an outsider. I wasn't on the inside of that, so who knows? And I'm all for smaller creators getting attention, but it's like, surely there was a better way to do it than via Twitter. Then aside from that, this connects to a point that I had made in my prior video where I was saying that a lot of brands were just releasing a lot of products back to back and specifically with Anastasia Beverly Hills it felt disorganized because it felt like they didn't plan each palette to have its moment you know like ideally you want a product to have its moment so you can hype up then when it comes out you can like show reviews and you can let it have its time you know with Anastasia Beverly Hills and there are other brands that I could name it just seemed like everything came out now mind you I know some shit was leaked so some of it wasn't timely but even with the Alyssa Edwards palette then there was Jackie Ina and Carly Bible I can't remember in what order but I remember that I barely realized that the Alyssa Edwards palette came out and I only knew because my friend told me. Other than that, I wouldn't even have known because I feel like there was so much being released that none of these had their own moment. It was just like, here's one palette, here's another one, here's another one. And that seems disorganized to me because it's like, ideally, you'd want to kind of plan strategically based on how long you want to give each palette. Some people become successful and they lose their relatability and forget that their supporters got them there. Almost like a false sense of security of like, oh, I don't need anyone, I did this all by myself. And as much as yes, the creators put in work, it's also like you need to remember that your subscribers, your followers, whatever it is, are the ones who got you there. But it seems like sometimes people take it a little bit too much for granted. Creators desperately try to stay relatable in the same way as they were before, even though realistically things have changed. Like you're not the same person because now you're a millionaire and now you live in a million dollar house and your life isn't the same and that's fine. I personally am happy when the creators I enjoy are successful. I have no issue with that. I don't like when they pretend to be broke or pretend to have less money or pretend that their life hasn't changed because some people stay relatable. I don't know what category Jenna Marbles would be in terms of community, but I feel like she's stayed relatable even with her massive success, right? But there are certain people who have changed and that's not necessarily always a bad thing, but I think it's silly to pretend like no change has happened. Like I know these are people who aren't necessarily in the beauty community, but I know a lot of people were coming for Emma Chamberlain because they said she changed. Honestly, I do think she changed, but I don't necessarily think it's for the worse. It's just like, she's in a different place. She might've grown, you know? I don't really follow her content, but I know about what people are saying. And I know that a lot of people have this issue with Shane Dawson. Now, I guess he is part of the beauty community now. I don't want to go into my opinion because I don't think it's very popular, but anyway, a lot of people are bothered by the fact that Shane 
acts like he's poor, especially around Jeffree Star, like wearing his ripped shirts and stuff like that. And I know a lot of people are annoyed with it because it feels a little bit like a gimmick to be like, oh, I'm not rich, I'm just like you. And it's like, the reality is, we're happy for you, dude. We're happy that you have money. Let's just not pretend like that's not the truth because then it just seems kind of disingenuous. Some creators have been in the crossfire because it seems like they only film videos at this point to sell things. So the irony is YouTubers kind of don't make YouTube videos anymore. There are a lot of larger beauty creators who essentially only come in and film videos when they're selling you something. So there are some people where it seems like the only reason they're filming the video is because maybe they have a new affiliate code with Morphe, maybe they're releasing their own palette and they only really film when something is happening that would benefit them if that makes sense and mind you it's normal to want to film about the launch of your product but it might seem a little bit more calculated when that's pretty much the only times you film I do think that is manipulative because the idea of YouTubers doing YouTube is because they're doing something they enjoy. So with the beauty YouTubers, they're doing their makeup because they enjoy doing their makeup, right? Ideally, when a YouTuber comes on screen to say, hey, I'm talking about this makeup brand, it's because they're excited and they wanna share it with you. But when they time it in such a way where it seems like they're trying to sell you something, it just seems manipulative to me, just kind of like, oh, I'm making this content for you, but also not really because I'm making it because Morphe, 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 right? Another aspect of manipulation comes in when creators don't want to take accountability for their actions. Now, we all know, we have all seen the beauty guru apologies where they essentially don't really apologize, but rather play play the victim card, you know, great hoodie, no makeup, I'm in a dark place, whatever. And as much as I do believe that it must be extremely overwhelming when you have a lot of people hating on you, it's kind of like when Lipstick Gate happened with Jaclyn Hill and her fuzzy lipsticks. She kind of went MIA and didn't really take accountability for a while, and maybe to this day, that's up to you to decide. It was manipulative in a certain way because she kept going on about how she had anxiety and how she w it was hard for her to film or she was scared to film. And as much as I think these things are true, she probably did have anxiety, she probably was scared to film, I can not imagine what she dealt with. At the same time, if you fucked up and you have kind of yet to rectify your wrongdoing, saying that you're anxious and stuff like that seems like you're making people want to pity you rather than take accountability for what you did. And like I said, it's not mutually exclusive. It's not like you have to apologize or you have to have the feelings you have. You can have both, but the reality is, no matter what you're going through mentally, the situation is what the situation is. And as much as mental health issues are not your fault, they are your responsibility. So just because you're anxious or just because you're depressed or whatever else you have, that doesn't justify shitty behavior. You know, like I'm depressed, I have a disorder. That doesn't justify any shitty actions on my behalf. I'm still doing the shitty actions. I'm still responsible and I still have to apologize for them. I think with some creators, because they have depression, anxiety, whatever else, they try to make it like that's to blame when that's not really fair. So the bottom line is having a mental illness does not excuse you from doing shitty things. Then the last point is the feigning of friendships. So it seems like there are some friendships that seem less genuine than others. And most of the time it seems manipulative because you start to wonder, are these people actually friends or is this a business move? Is this a way to have crossover fans? Is this a way to have more people talking, right? Because we see this with, well, some people thought that that was the reason why Manny MUA was friends with Jeffree Star because then he would get attention from being with Jeffree Star and then that might gain him subscribers, that might gain him views, that might gain him some level of notoriety. That's just an example. In the end, we don't know what happens behind closed doors, but there are certain people who seem to be very strategic with who 
they are quote unquote friends with, but the reality is there's also a lot of fallout very often and friends do fall out, but if it's always the same people who fall out with other people, you start to wonder, is this person toxic or maybe is this person just using this to get clicks? It's manipulative because they're trying to convince you of a reality that might not even be the reality. And aside from that, it's also like, you can use a creator to better your image. You know, like if you were in a scandal and then all of a sudden your friends with a wholesome creator, does that help you? Probably. Or if you're not feeling like you're relevant as you were, if you befriend a creator who's in scandals all the time, would that get you attention? Yeah. So I do think that a lot of these beauty people really do make strategic choices as to who they're friends with friends. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know if there are other issues that you think I should address. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always, and let's get right into the fan art.